Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Mental Health Casual. I am lucky, and today we're going into the depression subreddit to answer some questions, give some generalized advice, but I am by no means a professional, so feel free to take my advice with a grain of salt or apply it to your life however you see fit. I actually do this six days a week over on the podcast, which I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. For anybody that's new here, I was diagnosed with depression back in... 2011. I always say 2018 because I was 18 in 2011, but that's not right. <laughs> so back in 2011, when I was hospitalized, put under a 5150, and I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder, social anxiety, and mania. So having a lot of experience dealing with my own depression, that is kind of the basis on which I kind of give a lot of this advice and whatnot. It's mostly based off of my own subjective account. Also, I have looked into it a little bit. I've gone through therapy, all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying I am the utmost authority but I do like to go ahead and talk about this as openly as possible and if I'm wrong then go ahead and just let me know in the comments or if you guys have a similar story let me know in the comments down below let's get to the first post why is depression increasing nowadays depression is increasing because humans stop creating things in ancient times human life was so simple they focus on one thing a farmer, his or her main focus is only farming, nothing else. But now human life is so complicated. Humans never live for themselves, humans live for society. Nowadays, we always want something that society tells us, or more specifically, we do work to get some fame in society. In the past, humans were living their life for themselves, but now for society. That's my opinion. What do you guys think? So this actually goes back to one of my, my main points that I typically talk about when we're talking about... Uh, mostly depression and anxiety. I think you can probably apply it to other types of mental illness, but for these ones in particular, it is the idea of, I, I always stress two things. It's usually purpose and community. In this case, it is definitely purpose. And I get what they're trying to say, right? Like, yes, it was probably harder for people back then because they didn't have the plethora of choices. So they had to do something, even if they weren't the best at it, they had to, you know, kind of just bite down on their mouthpiece and kind of go forward nowadays we have so many different choices it can almost seem crippling which like it, it's kind of like a double-edged sword right like we have so many options and we have so many options so that's why i stress so much to find your your purpose in life because uh, it's actually a lot harder than you think and even then you never know when things are going to change So working on it earlier rather than later is actually a good thing to try and get out of the way That way you can kind of build off of your purpose purpose will give you some of the residual effects of things like you know happiness You know, I, I think the problem is sometimes people try and go too far into the happiness route The problem is that can become kind of a slippery slope meaning I you know I want to be happy by all means therefore I'm willing to do anything for it, which you know know it, as an addict I kind of worry about where that goes right because uh, alcohol made me very very happy but that was mostly in the moment so are we talking about short-term happiness or long-term happiness right because typically the sacrifices that you make for the short term usually help for the long term but getting back to the post uh, yeah, I think that uh, losing people losing their purpose, especially young men nowadays, is kind of what I'm seeing because men are kind of falling behind in a lot of areas. I just think that there's like a purpose crisis right now. Like people don't know what they want to do. And when people feel lost, it's almost like they, I mean, you know, I, I can attest to some of this uh this type of negative thinking, you know, when you don't have a purpose, you start thinking, or I'll just use myself as an example, I just won't, I won't talk about everybody else, but, you know, I would usually think, well, I don't have a purpose, therefore, I'm not worth anything, right? Purpose and worth kind of go together, especially when you're talking about this stuff, because ultimately, we are in a society, so if you don't have a purpose, or you don't have something that you're contributing to society, it becomes really hard to feel like you're a part of it. At some point, you just feel like you're leeching off of everybody, or at least I did at one point, and kind of, you know, I still struggle with that to even to this day but i would actually say that one of the biggest reasons why depression it was increasing was mainly because of the pandemic you know people were in um they weren't going outside and you know there, there's a lot of problems with doing that uh but yeah obviously the 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 other thing would be uh people losing purpose all right let's get to the next post according to wife long story short i am suffering from a suicidal depression i feel unwanted unneeded unloved i know at least a portion of it comes from my wife and our lack of sex and intimacy i talked with her and in her words quote 
You're only acting depressed because you're bored, end quote. Not disagreeing there, but tried to point out even at work or busy doing other things, i.e. busy, the thoughts pop up in my head. Like, oh, screw it, it'll be easier on everyone around me if I just die. And yes, I even have a plan in place. No, I won't do it, but I tried explaining it's not normal to have thoughts about how and when to kill myself in my head, and I need to get those thoughts out. No, I do not want to, quote, start a new hobby, end quote. No, I do not want to, quote, get a friend, end quote. No, I do not want to, quote, go to the gym five days a week, end quote. I have no desire to live. Yes, regardless of wife's views, I have an appointment tomorrow with a psychiatrist. But my question is, do you run into this type of attitude and how do you internally and externally deal with the fact that some people do not believe you. Be careful about trying to prove that you are mentally ill because once you start trying to prove it, uh, it can go very, very far. That's why I tell people who are dealing with somebody who may have a mental illness, don't push them over it or else they will, because the mind is a very fragile thing. So if you start to push them and say, ah, there's no way you have that or, you know, prove it, right? It's going to be very, very sad if they do prove it because how do they prove it, right? It kind of goes all the way down to obviously where this person is going. Now, I just want to point out real quick, one of the biggest red flags when you're dealing with somebody who has suicidal thoughts, right? Because there, there's, it kind of starts off with intrusive thoughts and then it kind of goes into suicidal thoughts. Once you really have to start worrying is when they have a plan in place. It shouldn't get to that, right? You'd want to stop it before it gets to that. But once it gets to the plan, that's when the desperate measures need to come out. Because even though they do say, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not, you know, I don't plan on doing it. Can you still say that even when crap hits a fan? And for people who are depressed, crap hits a fan all of the time. And it hits it harder, a lot harder than people who maybe aren't depressed or who don't have a disorder. So congrats on you trying to go see a psychiatrist. I really do hope that works out for you. As for your wife and other people out there, uh, you're going to have people that, that question your illness or whatever. You know, just let her know, listen, I want a professional opinion. Um, I'm going to go see a psychiatrist, see, you know, what we can kind of dig up. And, you know, if, if something does come back, right, if they don't, then that's fine. But if something does come back, and, you know, I get diagnosed with something or, you know, anything like that, then I really do want your support in this. I think it's one of the worst ideas to use sex as a, like in a relationship as a reward or, or as a punishment, because then it turns into something completely different other than, you know, what it's supposed to be meant for, love and intimacy. You know, I used to watch a lot of those, you know, Dr. Phil shows and, you know, all those other, other shows. And, you know, that was one of the things that I noticed in some of these marriages was that uh, a lot of times one of the, one of the people, you, typically the woman would be using sex as as like a reward or you know as they abstain from it as punishment or something like that which would lead the men to kind of go depressed and ideally that's not really what sex is supposed to be sex is supposed to be something that two consensual adults are well consenting to so just make sure that sex doesn't become you know i'm depressed because you're abstaining from sex or you know i'm depressed because of this uh it may be an intimacy issue and that doesn't always mean sex so make sure you talk about that with a therapist of some sort obviously you're, you're going to go see a psychiatrist who typically is is on the medication side of things, but I would strongly suggest you also see a therapist or a psychologist as well, somebody who can uh, help you sort through some of these thoughts. Not saying anything is wrong with having a psychiatrist. I usually just like to have both because the psychiatrist helps on a lot of the medication side and the psychologist or therapist or LCSW, whatever you want to uh, choose will be there more for you uh, in the uh, in the sense of talking and you know helping out through there and they both kind of work together to figure out you know how long it was going to be till I could be off of my medication if I could be off my medication and they actually came out with a plan together so that can also be another thing that helps you out as well anyway best luck to you let's go over to the next post addicted to sadness just wanted to know if anyone else can relate, but I just find so much comfort and pleasure in being sad and lonely. You know, this is something that I've had to figure out how to, you know, work down a little bit more. Um, I was trying to figure out is depression, I because I, after I was dealing with addiction, I was like, oh, everything is an addiction. This is an addiction. This is an addiction. Or this is a, a smaller part of an addiction. And then I, I kind of went off of that. But w one of the things that I had proposed or you know kind of as a hypothesis you know nothing I wasn't saying that it was like this but I ended up thinking that maybe depression is an addiction to sadness because that was something I, I just felt very comfortable with 
seeing sad things with being sad. And I think that when you are dealing with depression, it just seems so right to you. Like it, it seems like, oh, this is the normal. And I kind of think it's it has something to do with like the hedonic treadmill, but you know, just with our own, uh, but just with sadness instead of happiness. Humans are very adaptable. And the thing is they can become very adapted to, um, to a sad life. They can become very adapted to feeling sad all of the time, even though that's not actually what you're you're supposed to do, right? That has a lot of harmful physical effects even on your brain. But I personally can relate to this. You know, it seemed like anytime somebody wanted to bring me out of uh, out of my sadness, I was like, no, 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 leave me alone, leave me alone, you know? And then I would end up pushing people away because they wanted me to be happy. And I, um, I, I think it was more, I, I guess to a certain degree, it was a little bit more of, I just didn't, think that I could be happy. I just didn't think that was in the cards for me. And I didn't really know what I wanted in, at that point. And sadness just seemed so familiar to me that, you know, anybody trying to uh, give me anything new felt like it was it was scary to me. But I guarantee you, you are not the only one who thinks this way. I've definitely met a couple of people. So obviously a little bit more anecdotal in that nature. But um, I definitely get where this person is coming from. So best of luck with that and best of luck to all of these people. Remember, you can check out all things casual at the link tree in the description box down below. Also, if you'd like to email me, you can email me at mentalhealthcasual at gmail.com. But as always, guys, don't forget to keep it casual. Hey, guys, thanks for watching Mental Health Casual. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos.